Hello, my name is John Kissel. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic specializing in the care of patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And my uh, clinical and research uh, areas of concentration are specifically in the surveillance and prevention of cancers in this population of patients. I'm here today to talk about a study published uh, this month in the uh, Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology uh, Journal by uh, Dr. Eric Muir and his colleagues in the Netherlands. They uh, looked at the incidence of interval colorectal cancers. Those are cancers that are occurring between scheduled surveillance colonoscopies. And then also wanted to look at um, how those interval cancer diagnoses were impacted by current surveillance guidelines. These are, uh, are uh, shaping our basis for practice and then also look if they could identify any factors at the time of the surveillance colonoscopy that might have uh, caused a, a missed cancer or um, an inadequate surveillance exam. Uh, this group followed a cohort of nearly uh, 1,300 patients at uh, five university uh, hospitals and two community centers uh, between uh, January of 2000 and uh, 2014. Uh, so all told, they had uh, almost uh, 7,000 years of patient follow-up. What they found was that the uh, number of uh, cancers occurring in this population, uh, only about 17, uh, was smaller than they had initially expected and smaller than some older studies had suggested. Um, only five of those cancers were truly interval cancers, so ones that were occurring uh, before the next surveillance colonoscopy was scheduled. And unfortunately, when that happens, the cancers are usually very aggressive, uh, either difficult to treat uh, or incurable, uh, Duke's stage C or D. The flip side of that coin was that the remaining 12 cancers were probably attributable to inadequate surveillance exams or inadequate application of surveillance techniques. Uh, so patients that had inadequate bowel prep during their colonoscopies, uh, patients whom had, who had incomplete exams, so the endoscopist couldn't get all the way to the top of the colon, uh, patients uh, for whom the uh, required number of random biopsies was not taken. It's also interesting to note that 90% of this cohort had their exams performed with white light endoscopy rather than chromoendoscopy. The authors concluded that uh, because this rate of uh, total cancer diagnoses, and in particular the interval cancers, was lower than expected and, and potentially even on par with cancer incidence in the general population, that the surveillance guidelines are too strict, that the intervals are too close together. And I would actually counter that with uh, the fact that it seems that the uh, interval cancers uh, were probably not impacted by the surveillance guidelines at all, and that there were a larger number of cancers occurring outside the intervals when uh, the intervals were narrow and more cancers occurring within the intervals when the intervals were wide. And so this argues that probably the wider intervals favored by European guidelines will probably miss a larger number of cancers numerically, although uh, that was not tested statistically in the manuscript. I think that this uh, data is very encouraging. It's a call to arms in several ways. First, I think our surveillance guidelines as practiced in the United States are probably correct, and although they're more conservative than those in uh, the UK, for instance, I think we're catching more cancers that way. Uh, two, the number of interval cancers appear similar to those in the general population, but the general population is getting exams much, much further apart. And so that doesn't say that the risk of cancer in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease uh, is any less. The fact that we're seeing less cancer probably means that we're applying surveillance more thoroughly and we're catching more in that setting. The study also found that uh, more than 20% of patients during the cohort had low-grade dysplasia. Now, these are low-grade precancers, uh, and th these are things that we want to find on surveillance exams. We're probably seeing less cancers because we're finding more of these early lesions and treating them, even using the scope non-operatively, treating those lesions and preventing cancer from developing at the first place. Also buried within the data of this paper is the fact that the rate of high-grade dysplasia was also about uh, 19 individuals in the cohort, a similar percentage to the number of cancers that were found. And high-grade dysplasia 
is a very risky uh, diagnosis and usually prompts uh, surgery for patients in whom it is found. So one could probably double the cancer incidence if one were to include high-grade dysplasia or carcinoma in situ uh, as a surg surgically actionable target in this population. So I think the take-home messages for me are when we do surveillance, we need to be doing a good job. We need to be making sure that we get adequate PrEP. If the PrEP is not good, it needs to be repeated. We need to be taking either random biopsies or chromoendoscopy if one feels comfortable and expert with that technique. Uh, if we can't complete the exam, we need to bring the patients back. We can't blow that off. And lastly, I think we are using the appropriate surveillance intervals in this country, although more data is indicated and needed. Thank you very much for your time and attention this morning.